Wars was, and still is, a browser-based role-playing game that parodies internet culture. You play as an archetype of an internet user, such as a troll, hacker, or noob, as you navigate and interact with a bunch of fake websites. I might have been the only programmer, but the design team was much bigger. I started the project with a couple of my high school friends, and we eventually enlisted dozens of members of the community to jam it full of fun content. It launched back in 2008. It was modestly successful. It paid the bills for a few years. The server traffic was often incredibly high. By the time we concluded the story with the third episode in 2010, it was obvious the income would not be enough to sustain itself, and we shifted it into maintenance mode. It seems that for the vast majority of people, maintenance mode might as well mean we're shutting this thing down any minute. I kind of get that. Websites cost time and money to run, and those are in short supply. However, it was always important to me to keep this thing running as long as possible. Forum Wars is a beautiful, and horrible, snapshot of the internet in the late aughts. The content is simultaneously hilarious, offensive, dated, and poorly aged. I spent the last week updating the infrastructure and code of Forum Wars so it would run properly in modern browsers, and it was like getting punched in the face with a fist of nostalgia. I decided it would be a great time to record my feelings, memories, and experiences, and hopefully inspire others to maintain their websites far longer than they normally would. Forum Wars has always begun with what you'd now call a trigger warning. The text has changed over the years, but the sentiment is the same. The game's content is deliberately offensive, and if that's not your kind of thing, you might not want to play this game. I won't fault you for that. If you're unsure what that means, and then you proceed into the introduction of the game, you're immediately greeted by a robot named Excrobot 5000, who's oddly preoccupied with feces. You can't say we didn't warn you. At the time when Forum Wars came out, the media was a lot more optimistic about the internet. Some acted as if it was going to solve all of the world's problems and create some kind of giant mesh of peace, love, and harmony. I do think the internet has done largely positive things for humanity, but it's also important to acknowledge the bad parts. Forum Wars is about those bad parts. Your player character's initial motivation is not heroic nor a desire to make the world a better place. It's ennui. A shady character comes around and offers you a small amount of money to disrupt a forum where a bunch of elderly, barely computer literate people are posting. It seems harmless enough. No one's gonna die because a forum for old people becomes inaccessible for a day or two. Sure, it's antisocial, but what else do you have going on? From then on, it's a quick descent into the darker corners of the internet. Many of your targets are unquestionably evil. Neo-Nazis, pedophiles, right-wing propagandists. Every fake website you enter in Forum Wars is full of the most extreme, satirized examples of its real-world counterpart. In a fitness forum, everyone is raging on steroids. In an indie music forum, everyone is a snob. We were constantly pushing the boundaries of decency. That's where some of the funniest material poured out. In our writers' rooms, we were often laughing so hard we were crying. Did we cross the line? Of course we did. Let me answer the question you were probably wondering. Our team was a bunch of 20-something white dudes. As we produced more content, we did diversify, but there's no beating around the bush here about who was writing these jokes at the time. A year or so ago, I went back and addressed some of my biggest regrets. We used a slur for gay people a few times. I'm not sure why I was okay with that at the time, being queer myself. I removed a pejorative for transgendered people, and a couple pieces of text that were borderline racist. In my opinion, none of those changes made the game any less funny. I've learned a lot in 15 years, and my tastes and opinions have evolved. Of course, there's some that argue that you should never go back and change stuff like this, that the game is a product of its time, but I see no glory in preserving prejudice. I'm sorry I allowed it into the game in the first place. This isn't to say the game is now perfect. If you keep pushing up against boundaries, sometimes you will overstep them. I'm sure there's things I missed in review, and of course different people have different and no less legitimate sensibilities. I do think it's still very funny though, and during a recent bout of maintenance I was laughing my butt off. A favorite of mine is Vanilla Land Vagina Fetish Forums, where users discuss your forbidden love of the female nether regions. One of the biggest design inspirations for Forum Wars was an old DOS game called Jones in the Fast Lane. It was a virtual board game, but more than that it was a life simulator. The interface was all point and click and you could enter different stores or buildings and each one would present you with a new interface full of fun systems to poke around with and discover. Forum Wars started with a few typical role-playing game systems, and then over the years we kept layering more and more on, until it was quite complex. The core enemy type is a forum. You fight it using your character's abilities. Conversations with NPCs are done via in-game instant messaging or email apps. Sometimes they even send you voice memos. There's an auction house to trade items with other players, and a job board that gives you randomly generated missions to keep you busy between the main quests. 
There's a multiplayer mode where groups of players can join up and form clans. As clan members owned other forms in particular combinations, they receive ice cream scoops and in-game playing cards which they can use to win a weekly game we call Domination. Despite the complicated rules, many players took part. We had two full text adventure games, a lengthy Phoenix Wright parody, and a storyline that involved the late Canadian actor Alan Thicke, who even sent us a grammatically dubious autograph about it. Formwars was built using Ruby on Rails, which was a relatively new framework at the time. It was the first thing I'd written in Ruby, and coming from the enterprise Java world, it was a huge breath of fresh air. The game relied heavily on JavaScript to work, which is common these days with single-page applications, but definitely more rare at the time. The first impressive feature I got working was the conversation trees. I really wanted an interface like in my favorite LucasArts adventure games, and spent a lot of time getting that working correctly. Behind the scenes, I built a JavaScript tool to visually build the conversations. These days a lot of software has adopted a similar node-based approach, but you'll have to take my word that this was a cutting-edge user interface at the time. By the third episode, we had over 150 conversations written up, so it worked out pretty well. Another cool thing in Forum Wars was the system for generating text. When you visit the forums, users will be participating in their communities, and after you start messing around, they'll reply angrily. These days a large language model would do a great job of creating this kind of content, but I didn't have such things available at the time. Instead, I built a tool that allowed us to create lists of replaceable words and build sentences with places to insert them, like in the childhood game Mad Libs. It made creating the content really fun, and I have fond memories of a few of us sitting around a desk, each with a laptop, laughing to ourselves as we added a funny quip for the others to see. Eventually, we made all these tools public as part of a weekly forum building competition called Forum Builder 2.0 Beta. Users could submit ideas for forums and vote on each other's ideas. The highest voted idea would win, and then people would submit ideas for topics and replies using the Mad Libs interface, which were also voted on. Some of the funniest content in Forum Wars was created this way. We added a similar interface for building game items, called Item Builder. Users could submit item ideas and images, and they would work their way into the game stores. These days, sadly, traffic has dwindled to the point where a forum or item rarely gets added to the game anymore. If you're curious about what's involved in maintaining a site like this after so many years, it's mostly straightforward stuff if you have any experience in system administration. Most of the hard work in making Forum Wars resilient was done when the traffic was an order of magnitude or two higher, so it can coast along pretty easily now on a VPS. Server bills have to be paid, domains and security certificates have to be renewed, software has to be updated to fix the security issues. Recently I did a week of work or so on it. I did a bunch of small things like enabling HTTPS for everything, which is now free and easy to do thanks to the efforts of Let's Encrypt. The bulk of the work was to remove a reliance on Flash for certain things. Flash's days were numbered ever since the iPhone came out, but we'd started using it in a few places. Fortunately, most of those places were just for reliable audio playback, and there's modern APIs to play sound in browsers, so it was pretty easy to replace. A couple of other places had more dynamic graphics, so I replaced them with an HTML5 Canvas API. It's actually much smoother too. I'm not sure what frame rate our Flash objects were using, but they look great on a high refresh rate monitor. There's one place where I cheated though. We have a minigame called The Shit Hit The Fan in Episode 3, which is a parody of Flash escape rooms, only more poop focused. That would have been a lot more work to convert, so I found a Flash JavaScript emulator that seems to run it fine. It's not as smooth as the other stuff I converted, but at least it works and I can move on. I can't promise that I'll maintain Forum Wars forever. I can't predict the future, it might become too difficult to do. However, it's still my goal to run it indefinitely. If I can keep this thing around for, say, 50 years, I think some internet culture historians of the future might find it to be quite the goldmine. Recently I saw that Imager has announced that they're going to be deleting old content. Forum Wars predates Imager, and most of the images our users uploaded to our forums were on Ibitshack or TinyPig, both of whom did the same thing some time ago. The consequence of this is that virtually none of the images in our forums load anymore. They're lost forever. That's a huge bummer. Nothing else I hope that have inspired others to see the value of keeping content up this long. There's a reason the original Space Jam website is still awesome. Don't let your URLs expire. Put in the time to keep things churning. Forum Wars is considered a dead game by many of our users, but I just checked and in the last week 66 different people were playing it. That's not nothing. Just because you're not being inundated by user requests anymore doesn't mean that people still aren't enjoying what you've put out there, no matter how big or small. So do the right thing. Keep your stuff up as long as possible. If you like this video and want me to make more, please drop a comment and like and subscribe. You know the drill. It always helps. I'm working on a new game right now which is totally unrelated to Forum Wars, but maybe you want to hear more about its development? Subscribe if so. Until next time, see ya.